welcome back. Will this one too be that all familiar failure upon failure, problem after problem, despair? We'll see. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the place to go for representing you in your best way on the internet. Polini Evolution clutch. You can see there's some differences here. Much stiffer springs, lighter shoes probably, and adjustability. I'll set them at the stiffest setting. We'll need to do some adjustment to the new clutch. I've used these holes for mounting it to the pulley. These holes are not used for mounting originally. They're probably just used for like lightning. This one has holes that don't properly match up. They're too far in. So I'll have to file all the holes to make my bolt pattern fit. Operation number one.
it's acting extremely lazy. Can't give it full throttle, it just bogs down. Think there's some uh, crud in the carburetor or something else wrong with it. Compression checks out, ignition seems to be working. Could be some ignition trouble, but I think it's the carb. Choking it did help a bit. The reeds look fine. There's one thing here though. Pump pulse hole sits very close to the bore on the carb. I had to relocate it. Relocate it to, unfortunately, directly where that bolt hole is. The reason I relocated it is for it to sit outside the reed, reed hole there. That means it's outside these ceiling things, ceiling bulges. I'll fix this with a gasket. I'll have to punch a hole for that pump line, but, but a gasket should solve this. I don't think this is the problem though. It didn't feel like just a small air leak. I think there might be some crud in the carb. I'll have to take that apart and inspect and maybe clean it. Can't see anything wrong in the pump side. Can't find anything obviously wrong. Slight wear to the low speed needle, that's about it. I'm going to check the pop-off pressure with this pop-off gauge and see where it's at. It's supposed to be around 12.5 to 13 psi. Pop-off pressure is how much pressure is needed to release the, the fuel inlet needle from its seat. Allow fuel to enter this metering chamber. If the pop-off pressure is set too high, carb can run dry when you give it more throttle. Could be the thing here. Not a good idea to stare into here when you do this test. Ask me how I know. So we're at 11. Seems to be popping at around 13. Now this might not be ideal for my engine and carb combo. I could try to set it lower with a softer spring. I could also just use a normal flow chamber carb, a known good flow chamber carb for initial testing now. This carb is totally unknown to me. Remember back in the day when if you wanted a website for you or your business, you needed to write the whole thing yourself in HTML or even worse. With Squarespace, that's certainly not the case anymore. You can choose from a bunch of beautiful templates to start with, customize them as you like, or just keep them as they are. Great starting point and a good place to start to tweak things to where you want them. Easy to integrate your social media platforms. Squarespace also features a seamless integration with your web store. A great way to keep track of inventory and orders and sales and just keep everything in sync. Squarespace does domains too. Kind of nice to have everything in one place. Won't have to worry about FTP clients and file naming and folders and all that, that stuff. <laughs> Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash two-stroke stuffing to get 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you, Squarespace. The day after, if this looks different, it's because I've upgraded my camera. Might not be set properly yet. I've been thinking quite a bit about this pop-off pressure and, uh, and the height of this uh, lever since yesterday and might remember I'm running extremely high crankcase volume, extremely low crankcase compression. This might be a problem with a pumper carb. It relies on the pressure differential in the case for pumping. I think I'll lower the pop of pressure. I'll just clip the spring and uh, lower the pop of pressure to say 10 psi versus the 13, around 13 it is now. This will probably make it impossibly rich when the pipe hits. That's not a problem because we've got that secondary intake with not a pumper carb. Excuse the noise, I'll have to turn on the heat. It's really cold out here. Again, excuse the noise, it's popping at 9 psi now, which is probably too low. But who knows? I don't think I've ever seen anyone run this kind of carb on something with this.
this huge uh, crankcase volume. We'll reassemble and uh, we'll try it. Ready for another test, now with 9 psi pop-off pressure and with that probable leak fixed. I wasn't really set on troubleshooting the engine at this point, more the dyno. It's not behaving at all. I don't think that car manages to pump enough with that big crankcase volume. That's my theory anyway. Could be something with the ignition, unlikely. Could be an intermittent loss of compression thing, like on my land speed, like with the previous engine on my land speed bike. I don't think so though. I haven't revved this that hard and, and pinched the the ring gap, I think. We should try to get a normal float carb on here. There's not much room though. Why is it that with everything I do, it's always like this? Why? Why? I've got this intake, which is meant to be mounted to this reed valve, but in this orientation, that won't work. Could make an adapter plate and mount it like this though. I'll have to take off the reed valve and see if it seals, if it can seal in this orientation. I can just file some notches here and bolt it like in a crude way. Instead of spending a bunch of time making a new one, which can't be used when this engine is in the bike frame anyway. There's enough surface here to seal in this orientation. I think it'll work. Let's hope this is it.
better with this carb. I think our problem is the crankcase volume. I don't think it can get past that hump before the pipe hits, when the pipe is working against the rest of the engine. With the little bit of load that's on there now. I'm gonna take off the belt and see how it behaves without the belt. Well now we know, with extreme crankcase volume comes extremely low power at low RPM. Not even enough to spin up this pulley. I'll have to find or fabricate a primary clutch that I can mount on the crankshaft and uh, that doesn't grab until the power band. Unless it's possible to lighten this enough for it to spin more freely.